let's talk about oxidizing and reducing agents. Now we've learned how to define oxidation and reduction in terms of oxygen transfer, in terms of electron transfer, and in terms of oxidation numbers. We want to know what oxidizing agent is. Now, an oxidizing agent is a substance that is reduced in a reaction. So the substance that is undergoing reduction is what we call the oxidizing agent. Now, we have a lot of oxidizing agents. And examples of these are sulfur 4 oxide, potassium, tetra ozomanganate 7. We also have potassium, hepta ozodichromate 6. We also have iodine, chlorine, hydrogen peroxide, ion 3, etc. These are examples of oxidizing agents. So whenever you see them, chances are they are undergoing reduction. That means their oxidation number is going down. A reducing agent is a substance that is oxidized in a reaction. So if you look at a redox reaction and you see a substance whose oxidation number is increasing in the course of the reaction, that substance is undergoing oxidation and that substance is called a reducing agent. So it's kind of like a swap. The substance undergoing reduction is the oxidizing agent and the substance undergoing oxidation is the reducing agent. Now examples of reducing agents are sulfur 4 oxide, hydrogen sulfide, metals, halides, talking about the fluoride ion, the chloride ion, the bromide ion, and the iodide ion. They are the halides. Then we have hydrogen gas. Then we also have ion 2 ion. We have other ones too as well. Now, sometimes you'll be given a chemical reaction. Then they will ask you, identify the oxidizing agent and the reducing agent in that chemical reaction. In that case, what do you do? Now, you remember we learned how to find which substance is undergoing oxidation and reduction in a chemical equation based on the oxidation numbers. So what we'll be doing is we'll be calculating the oxidation numbers of all the elements in the reaction. Then we will ask ourselves, which one is undergoing oxidation? That is an increase in oxidation number. So that one undergoing oxidation is what we are going to call the reducing agent. Then the one whose oxidation number is reducing in the course of the, rea the reaction is the substance undergoing reduction. So the substance that is reduced or that undergoes reduction in the reaction is what we are going to call the oxidizing agent. Now, there's one substance here, sulfur 4 oxide. It can act as both oxidizing agent and reducing agent. And it depends on the kind of reaction you see it inside. Now, without further ado, we'd like to look at some examples of how we can identify which substance is an oxidizing agent and which one is a reducing agent in a chemical reaction. In the first reaction, we have SO2 plus H2S going to produce two moles of H2O and three moles of sulfur. Now, let's assume we don't know SO2 is acting as an oxidizing agent and H2S is acting as a reducing agent according to the examples we are given. Let's assume we don't know. How do we find out which one is undergoing oxidation and which one is undergoing reduction? Now, let's try looking for the oxidation numbers of the species involved over here. Now, um, this is oxygen. We know from the rules for assigning oxidation number is that oxygen is normally found in a minus two oxidation state, except when it is in a peroxide. And we know this is not a peroxide. So oxygen has a charge of negative two here. Then we have two of the oxygen atoms. So negative two times two, and that will give us negative four. 
Now we don't know the oxidation number for sulfur, so we assume it to be X. Now when we add the oxidation number of sulfur to the oxidation number of all the oxygen atoms, which is negative four, this is a compound, it's supposed to give us zero. Which means that the oxidation number for sulfur becomes positive four. So we have positive four over here. Hydrogen, whenever it is with a non-metal, its oxidation number is positive one. And sulfur is a non-metal, eh? so the oxidation number for hydrogen will be positive one here. Now we have two of them. So positive one times two, that will give us positive two. And this is sulfur. Assuming we don't know the oxidation number of sulfur, this is a compound. So when we take the oxidation number of the hydrogens, which is positive two now, and add it to the oxidation number for sulfur, which we don't know, but we are going to represent by the letter X, we are going to get zero which means X will be equal to negative two. So sulfur over here has oxidation number of negative two. This is hydrogen. Oxygen is a non-metal. So hydrogen with a non-metal has oxidation number of positive one. Now this is not a peroxide. So the oxidation number of oxygen would definitely be negative two. This is sulfur. It is an element on its own, standing there alone. So its oxidation number is zero. Now, let's check and see what is happening to the oxidation numbers. So let's talk about sulfur first. This is sulfur. It is positive four over here. And at the product side, its oxidation number is reducing to zero. So oxidation number reduces now when the oxidation number reduces we say it has undergone reduction that means sulfur has been reduced over here in this reaction now what did we say about substances that are reduced they are rather called the oxidizing agents i'm going to represent oxidizing agent with o a so Sulfur over here is undergoing reduction. So sulfur four oxide or SO2 becomes our oxidizing agent. Now oxygen has the same oxidation number on both sides, eh? so it's not a relevant species. Now hydrogen has an oxidation number of positive one here, and over there to is positive one. It is not experiencing any change. But look at this sulfur here. Negative two, and it increases to zero. So its oxidation number increases from negative two to zero. So we can say that H2S over here is undergoing oxidation that means h2s is oxidized in the chemical reaction over there now what did we say about substances that are oxidized in the chemical reaction we said they are the reducing agents so do you see how I did, did you see how i did it uh -huh. now I checked the oxidation numbers of the species. Then I looked at the ones whose oxidation number is increasing in the course of the reaction. Now, when the oxidation number increases, as in the case of sulfur in H2S, we say the substance is undergoing oxidation. And the substance that undergoes oxidation is called the reducing agent. Now, sulfur in SO2 has its oxidation number decreasing from positive four to zero. So it is undergoing reduction. And since it is undergoing reduction, it becomes our oxidizing agent. Let's try with the second one and see. Now this is magnesium. It's an element standing there alone, not combined to any other different element. So its oxidation number automatically is zero. Now, oxygen. 
it is also an element standing there alone, not combined to any other element. So its oxidation number also becomes zero. Now, at the product side, we have a compound here. Now, this is not a peroxide. So oxygen would definitely have a charge of negative two here. Now, magnesium in this compound, magnesium is a group 2A element. And what did we say about group 2A elements? Whenever you see them in any chemical substance, their oxidation number over there is positive 2. So if you look at it critically, you realize that the oxidation number of magnesium increases from 0 to 2 increases so it is undergoing oxidation and the substance undergoing oxidation which is magnesium is what we are going to term as the reducing agent now let's look at this one too oxygen had an oxidation number of zero and it decreased from zero to negative two so the oxidation number has gone down and that is termed as reduction. And the substance undergoing reduction, we said, is called the oxidizing agent. Could you please try your hands on the last two questions? Now, in the last, question, uh, last but one question, you realize zinc ion. It's a simple ion. And we said simple ions have oxidation number equal to the charge carried by that simple ion. And the charge is positive too. So the oxidation number for zinc 2 plus will be positive 2. Copper is an element standing there alone by itself. So its oxidation number is 0. Now at the product side, the copper has a charge of positive 2. And that is a simple ion, so its charge becomes positive 2. Zinc is now alone, so its oxidation number becomes 0. So from copper to copper 2, we have an increase in oxidation number from 0 to positive 2. And we call that process oxidation, which means copper here is being oxidized. That's, that also means that this copper, which is being oxidized, becomes our reducing agent. Now, zinc has its oxidation number reducing from positive 2 to 0. And the reduction in oxidation number is what we call reduction. And what did we say about substances that are undergoing reduction or are being reduced? They are the oxidizing agents. The last question. The last question. Now, oxygen has a charge of negative 2. And we have three atoms of oxygen. Eh? So we have negative 2 times 3. That will give us a total oxidation of negative 6 for oxygen. Imagine we don't know the charge of ion or the oxidation number for ion over here and we represent it by S. We have two atoms of ion so it becomes 2x. So 2x plus negative 6 should give us, this is a compound, so it should give us 0. So you have 2x is equal to 6 and our x will be equal to positive 3. So the oxidation number for ion over here is positive 3. Now, over here, too, we have a compound, CO. Oxygen, we know, has a charge of negative 2. We have only one of it, so negative 2, plus the oxidation number of carbon, which we don't know. So we are going to represent by X. When we add them together, this is a compound, so it's supposed to give us 0. So our X becomes positive 2. So the charge of carbon becomes positive 2. At the product side, iron is standing there alone, so its oxidation number is zero. Oxygen over here we know is negative two, and we have two of it, so negative two times two, that'll give us negative four. We don't know the oxidation number for carbon over there, so we represent it by X. 
So the X plus negative 4 should give us 0 since CO2 is a compound. So our X becomes positive 4. So the oxidation amount of carbon becomes positive 4. Now, let's look critically at the oxidation numbers and see the changes that are occurring. Now we have iron reducing from positive 3 to 0. From positive 3 to 0, so it's undergoing reduction. And since it's undergoing reduction, it is termed as the oxidizing agent. So the ion 3 oxide becomes the oxidizing agent. We know oxygen is negative 2 here, negative 2 there, so it's not experiencing any change at all. Now, the carbon in CO had oxidation number, sorry, had oxidation number of positive 2, which later increased to positive 4. An increase in oxidation number is what we call oxidation. And since carbon in CO is increasing in oxidation number, we can say that CO is undergoing oxidation or it is being oxidized. So that one becomes the reducing agent. Now we get it, right? So please, let's go to the past questions. You'll be seeing lots of questions you'll be asked to identify the oxidizing and the reducing agents inside. Let's try our hands on them. And if you have any problem, don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you.